Okay, I'd like to demonstrate for you Blender and MBDyne and Apprenticeship Learning for uh, Autonomous Control. We have several uh, demonstrations here, uh, starting with uh, a rock uh, dropping in gravity, and then a chain, which is like a multi-pendulum problem, an aeroelastic beam, a helicopter will fly that around, and then we'll show it with autonomous control. So we have this item here, which is a rock. This rock, it has uh, mass, um, and we can show, oh, here we go, uh, it's a body with mass, as you can see here, one kilogram and uh, and so uh, what we'll do with this is we'll uh, press input what that does is it generates a uh, MBDyne input file which we have here and then we'll press run and you'll see uh, that MBDyne was running up there and uh, so now what we'll do is press display and what this does is it brings in all of the motion data which we can then see here and we can also watch it perform so we'll uh, animate this and we have a rock dropping in gravity. So once you have MBDyne and Blender installed, which are rather straightforward, and the scripts, uh, this is a very good test to show that in fact it all works. So let's go to the next one. Uh, next we have a chain. This chain is uh, made up, uh, there's two Blender layers. One is uh, showing these chain elements, which uh, as you can see, I'll just render this, you, know, you end up with a nice rendered chain. But what we want to do is uh, actually have realistic motion of this. So we have uh, several uh, mass elements, and then we have several joints, which are um, viscoelastic joints. So there's some damping in there, and um, they, uh, uh, they'll slow down the motion as, uh, as this moves. So uh, what we'll do, again, we'll uh, press input, um, and from here we uh, generate, the uh, again, the uh, input file. Here we go. Let's uh, bring in the uh, press display, as you can see there. Um, and right there display and that'll bring in the uh, motion data so you can see once we have the motion data um, you'll see see it all shows up here so we can uh, see uh, uh, it's interesting actually you can see well let's watch it let's play it so you can see this move and if we go ahead and play it all out you'll see that it actually slows down over time because of the damping um, and that's represented here you can see the damping in this oscillatory motion so um, uh, the other nice thing is that you can uh, not only uh, do the dynamics, but you can just uh, have the chain itself or any other object that you're modeling and show it uh, photorealistically. Um, I'm not going to take the time to render this, but you can see it, it actually has a nice motion like uh, what you would expect of when you drop a chain like this and you're watching it go. So, All right, so next we'll do an um, aeroelastic beam. Uh, this beam, uh, oh, we have a couple of different uh, cameras here, uh, but this beam, that's the camera we want right there. All right, this beam, it's a, a, a series of three node beams all connected. So these three, uh, well, that, that, and actually that make up a three node beam. If we come over here and we look, we can do um, three node beam and uh, click OK, and sure enough, those three items uh, pop up. And we have another three node beam there, and then we also have these uh, Aero uh, uh, dynamic elements, um, which you see aerodynamic element, and the, these are uh, three aerodynamic elements in each of these beams. Anyway, so this item at the beginning is a clamp, and um, what we'll do now is uh, again press input, and uh, this input file is very lengthy; it's um, about three, four hundred lines long, if not more. And we'll run this. While Okay, we're back. It uh, finished running, uh, and now we'll bring in all the motion data. So for that, uh, we come down here, press display, and you'll see it takes a little while for it to come in. It's a lot. Just to set this up, uh, it's a very flexible beam. Uh, the uh, gravity is constant, and the air starts from zero and accelerates to some uh, like 20 uh, feet per second or something. And uh, that wind then lifts the uh, beam up. Um, it initially falls due to gravity. So let's watch this. Right, so let's animate it, and you can see it fall, and then the wind blows and uh, starts pushing it back and lifting it up. And part of the reason it lifts up is that the uh, beam elements on the end, you can see they have a bit of an angle of attack. Uh, you can see that if you kind of look at it from the side here, you can see uh, that some of those on the end have an angle of attack. The other thing we can do um, is that there's another camera. Uh, this is on the tip of... Uh, wing. So let's run this. So it's the same motion you saw before, but it's just a different perspective. And next, uh, let's move on. Uh, we have a um, 
helicopter. This helicopter is a, uh, it looks uh, like a Bell 430. It's modeled after a Bell 430. Uh, but we have several different dynamic models. The first one we'll show is uh, a very naive uh, dynamic model that <coughs> is uh, very similar to the model that's used within uh, apprenticeship learning for autonomous control. So um, let's, um, you know, let's look over, uh, if we could, um, down here uh, we will uh, open up a what's called a file driver. Uh, I'm going to go into a little more detail. I have more detailed videos on what you've seen before, but this is the first time I've shown apprenticeship learning, so I'll, I'll take this a little slow. Um, so first thing we're going to do is uh, have a stream, not a step, but a stream driver. So we do this, we, uh, and uh, this stream driver, by the way, um, it will have a name of uh, F. We're going to create a new one called F. We have an old one called F, but we'll create a new one. And we'll click uh, Input, and this is just telling us uh, which controls are associated uh, with which uh, sticks. Um, what we do is uh, we put the cursor over here, and you'll see uh, I'm going to press P. And when I do, the helicopter will fall from gravity, and uh, we'll go fly it. So there it goes. It falls, and now we're flying it. Now, um, and so I'm going to fly it around a little bit, just because, um, uh, let me see, I, yeah, that, that slowdown that you're seeing, uh, that's because I'm recording the video of this as we go, and so every once in a while it has to uh, take a copy. But um, anyway, I'm just going to fly this thing around a little bit. Um, this, as I mentioned, it's like a small RC model, dynamic model, so it's not unheard of, for instance, to, um, let me see, uh, have it do a loop, right, cool stuff, uh, have it do a roll, all right, again, par pardon the interruption, but uh, that's just because we're recording. And so anyway, there we go. So that's, uh, that's all fun. All right, so now we'll quit this. Next, um, what we'll be able to do is uh, autonomously control this. So the way we uh, set this up is, um, again, we come down here and uh, right click. Uh, we do file, and we go and now from a stream to step, we go over to a le apprenticeship learning control. And uh, so now we'll fly it autonomously. And this is interesting because you'll see uh, the projected uh, path, and you'll see how the helicopter um, handles uh, flying on that projected path. So uh, we come over here, again, down to file. Now we have a stream drive, but it, the stream that's coming in is not from the joysticks. It's from uh, apprenticeship learning. So we press input, and now uh, uh, we press P, and you'll watch this fly. And what you'll see is um, you'll see some boxes that represent the intended path. And that intended path is... Uh, the recorded position and orientation, uh, as well as, as if you'd seen the presentation on this, uh, velocity, acceleration, and control inputs. So um, the uh, apprenticeship learning is flying, and again, oh, there we go. Okay, it's it's pausing because of um, again it's clearing the buffer out. But you're seeing that there's the intended path, and the vehicle is following uh, that intended path. That's uh, rather cool, and you can see also. It is following it very closely, within um, a uh, perhaps a tenth of a meter, uh, at a at a very high refresh rate of uh, 20 hertz. So um, okay, so there we have that. Um, let's uh, finish that, and now we'll move on. Uh, the next helicopter is a little more uh, interesting, from a engineering perspective. Oh well, the next helicopter is this coaxial helicopter. Now this one is built up of a lot of components. We've got upper and lower swash plates and, uh, and blades and uh, what have you. Let me uh, look here. Look, you can see. Okay, so it's got all these pieces. And when we uh, press input, um, we'll make this model. All right, now I'm going to show this uh, just so you have a sense of what all goes into this. This is uh, 600 lines. And uh, again, all of this specification uh, describes the uh, helicopter. It's on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so enough of that. All right, so let's go fly this helicopter. All right. So, um, so to do that, uh, again, let's go over here. Make sure that we've got this set up for uh, it's a stream drive without apprenticeship learning, and uh, we'll click input. Oh, I haven't shown you the uh, our controller. Uh, this is the controller, so that's what we're going to fly. So here we go. I'll press P, which is play in uh, Blender, and off the helicopter goes. Now, what I have to do here is, the reason it's falling is it starts out 
with uh, zero RPM and uh, what have you. Now uh, I gradually increased collective um, until it then generated some lift. And now that it's uh, generating some lift, I made sure it didn't fall through the ground. And I can put in some yaw now, which is what I'll do. And if you were to look very closely, you'd see uh, the swash plates move differentially so that um, they go uh, up and down. And, but you'll see some yaw here. And uh, so that it's yawing around. And then uh, I can, uh, I have to be very careful about not putting in uh, aggressive stick inputs because otherwise the uh, time step can't handle the change. Um, if I were running this in batch, I could um, have a much uh, finer time step. But for the purposes here, I'm, I'm, I'm flying the vehicle, and it's got a lot of elements. There's um, a good uh, 50 elements in this helicopter. So and we're pitching it forward, so you can see. Um, nothing really too exciting here, but um, you know these are uh, blades that uh, are articulated, um, and we have swash plates with uh, linkages and push rods and all of that. So. Um, again, and all that data is uh, collected and you could make use of it. All right, so let's quit this. Next uh, looks uh, very much like what we were flying before. It's a little different though. Um, and I'd like to show you what the uh, model itself is. The model is um, of essentially a Bell 430. It's a 9,400 pound helicopter in uh, hover trim condition and we have a linearized trim model. So we've got the mass damping and stiffness matrices, which are six by six matrices. Uh, pretty much uh, every cell in those six by six is uh, populated by a number, which affects the uh, uh, dynamic behavior of the vehicle. And uh, the stick inputs, of course, they affect pretty much uh, all six degrees for every stick input because it's uh, a very uh, difficult to control system. And uh, these are uh, kind of all the drives that go into uh, defining this. Uh, rather than showing each of them, what I'll do I spend a little bit of time on what the input file looks like. And so um, here we go. Let's uh, go up and show the input file. Um, and this input file, let's go all the way to the top. All right. So we have the usual comments and stuff up there. Then what we have here is a, we have uh, the body, which is, this is in kilograms, so it's 4263 kilograms. Um, again, 9,400 pound uh, helicopter. And then here is our damping matrix. So it's a six by six damping matrix. So again, because this is a, a hover trim model, we pretty much need to fly it and hover. Um, but we'll take it a little ways away from that. Um, all right, so we start off in hover. Um, and um, I have to be all over this because it will very quickly try to get away from me. And uh, so, but I'll put in a, a little bit here, some uh, yaw. Um, okay, that's that delay of uh, clearing the buffers out. Um, and hopefully uh, we won't have that same issue. I'll, I'll be able to uh, create the uh, apprenticeship learning control from this. Right. Come on, come on, come on. All right, there we go. A little more collective. All right, and that's good. So, uh, all right, so now we'll do the uh, apprenticeship learning so that's just uh, again a matter of going to this drive going from stream to AL control click input and uh, oh so it did it and now let's play it and uh, the uh, controller does a remarkably good job of having the aircraft follow its intended path um, because I mean we're talking about um, a very uh, complex model if you will for this uh, vehicle and uh, but there you see it. It's uh, it's following uh, rather closely where it's intended to be. And uh, I've worked with this quite a bit. And um, it uh, as long as the vehicle uh, has relatively low pitch roll and yaw rates, it can track very well. All right. So um, there we have all of those. I also have uh, one other model here. This is a cruise model. All of these are uh, in this one file. Uh, this one file is uh, this uh, uh, tutorials blender file that av is available on the internet.